Live from 2 News. This is Talkin' Real, powered by Strong Auto Group. Welcome to Talkin' Real, our weekly update on all things RSL. I'm David James, along with Brian Dunseth and Dunny. For the first time this year, RSL has a three-game winning streak. They yep. beat Sporting Kansas City. They won this, but as we'll see in the highlights, they were tested. Fifth minute, free kick. Sporting KC, ball bouncing around in the area. Dom Dwyer with a dangerous chance, but Jeff Atanella is up to the challenge. Well, Walter Gatto once again proving he's one of the best in Major League Soccer, even though he's not a consistent starter in Major League Soccer. Great reaction save, great touch, proactive movement from Dom Dwyer inside the six-yard box. Ninth minute, KC on a counter. Dwyer flying down the middle of the field, and Abdul Mansali runs him down and clears the ball. Uh, there, there's not a, a defender in Major League Soccer that you want to get tackled by, but you really don't want to get tackled by Abdullah Mansali. Look the way he closes down this space, 15 yards, cuts down the angle. Dwyer's first touch lets him down, and that tackle is just a fantastic recovery run. 34th minute, RSL attacking off the goal kick through two defenders. Javier Morales beats Tim Malia, and he has the game's first goal. Yeah, it's just filthy, absolutely filthy. Watch Javier, one, two, three, get his head up. Melia just hung out to dry. Nothing he can do about it. Javier Morales continues to impress game after game. 43rd minute after the celebration, RSL attacking again. Jao Plata denied by the crossbar. Well, combination play, top of the 18-yard box, inside. And it's really an interesting strike, the way Joao Plata opens up. Less preferred right foot, strikes it back down, up, hits the crossbar. Melia saved by his post. Olmos Garcia comes on in the 61st minute and 10 minutes later. Now, oh, 49th minute. First, how about Benny Failhaber? Tying it up. Well, from that distance, you give a player that opportunity and you don't worry about it. You think your goalkeeper's got it covered, but watch the 10. Opens up his hips, far post side net. That's a world-class goal right there from Benny Failhaber. Benny Failhaber, the equalizer. So it is one all. And then Olmos Garcia comes on and turns on the Jets around the defender, around the keeper, taken down, and the ref points to the spot. Well, just minutes before, he missed a great opportunity, that final ball back across the six-yard box. This time, full speed, rounds Eric Palmer Brown. Melia trips him up. He pulls up the landing gear. Melia picks up the yellow card. Joao Plata steps to the spot. 73rd minute, Plata puts RSL in front, 2-1. to one. Uh, it's the go-ahead goal. Melia guesses the right way. Plata does him better. Power, pace, accuracy. Watch Luke Mulholland, though, with Sebastian Jaime. He's dancing, dancing, dancing. Watch the bump. He turns, a little bit of a hug. I'm going to pants you. Pull your pants up, Sebastian. 76th minute. Antonella saving the three points for RSL. Across the mouth of the goal, tremendous. Well, every game he comes up with a big save, but he outdoes himself. Great job again from Dom Dwyer. Gets the end line, cutback ball. Great opportunity for Jacob Peterson. He's bested by an unbelievable reaction save from Jeff Atanella, who, again, has just been playing out of his mind, getting consistent run of games as he stepped in for the departed Nick Romando with national team duty. Nine starts, all competitions. He is 6-2-1. and one. So, FC Dallas on top of the Western standings. Vancouver two points back. The Galaxy four off the pace. Sporting Kansas City is fourth, and RSL has moved within three points of Seattle and Portland in the race for the final playoff first in the West. All right, now you were pointing out a couple shows ago how quickly Portland climbed through those Western standings with a hot streak. Yep. Now, RSL, what are they doing differently than they were doing earlier this year? Why has it come together? They're in form now. How's it happened? Easy answer. They're really not doing anything that's drastically different. They're just healthy. If you think about getting guys like Joao Plata, Sebastian Jaime in a more comfortable central role, Ole Miss Garcia coming off the bench, being an impact player. No more Alvaro Sabarillo, no more deferential treatment to kind of the status players within the squad. Nick armando has gone, Kyle Beckerman's gone, Javier Morales pulling the strings. This is a team right now that is way more confident because they're consistent in creating opportunities in the final third. Defensively, fourth choice center back, doesn't matter. Fifth choice center back, doesn't matter. Sixth choice center back, doesn't matter. 
this team right now is playing with a confidence level that we didn't necessarily see in the first third of the season. Ironically, after making a trade with DC United, almost immediately RSL makes a trip to play DC United. They'll see former RSL forwards Fabian Espindola, who's been gone two and a half years, and Sabo, who I don't think has been gone two and a half weeks yet. He's the <laughs> club's all-time leading scorer. What will it be like to see him in another jersey? You know Sabri is a handful. I'm sure he'll be stepping on our defenders' toes the whole game and giving him uh, elbows. But yeah, he's a handful, very physical, um, and obviously technically, technically he's a, he's a great forward and he's a true number nine. So it's going to be it's going to take a, a good shift from the defenders and the midfielders to keep him quiet. He looked very good. Uh, he looked very bright, really lively dangerous on crosses and and all that stuff that you would expect from Sabo and uh, Fabian was dangerous in, in, in his movements as well so you know we're gonna have to be very organized in the back um, against them and, and aware of them at all times. Really good movement uh, as you saw in the game last night uh, or two nights ago he's really good at finding that back shoulder it's gonna be a lot of communication it's gonna be uh, two center backs who are talking the whole time and working together it's going to take a uh, group effort in the back there. All right, forget the X's and O's for a moment. Yeah. What about the emotion? You changed teams. What was it like the first time you faced the New England Revolution? Uh, it was fun. It was a pride factor. It was, uh, I'm going to show them what they gave up on, and I'm going to stick it to them. And fortunately for all the times I was traded, whether I wanted to be traded or I didn't want to be traded, I either scored a goal or I was on the, on the good side of a blowout. Uh, this is going to be an interesting game for a lot of reasons. Best team in the Eastern Conference in D.C. United, a team stacked with veteran leadership, mm -hmm. and now you're going to face Alvaro Sabario and Fabiana Spindola. The question becomes, how do you deal with that? You've got the size, strength, aerial presence of Sabo. You've got the speed, agility of a guy like Fabiana Spindola. Uh, for me, when I take a look at the goals that they scored, and, and let's take a look at the goals that Alvaro Sabario has scored against the Philadelphia Union just last week and in his debut. It all starts with wide play, but I want to watch in particular his movement. As Sabo drifts, kind of gets away at that back post. Perfect service from Chris Korb. That's a well taken goal. It's a very, very difficult goal to score. His body motion is going away from the goal. He's going to have to torque his body, keep his shot on frame. Goalkeeper's caught a little bit too far at the near post, but watch the way he's able to finish. Well, what about Fabiana Spindola, you ask? Well, Take a look at the creativity of Fabiana Spindola. Now a designated player for DC United. His ingenuity, his ability to create in tough spots leads to opportunities for other teammates. And that's exactly what happened. And take another look. Look at the defenders. You've got one, two, three, four, five, six defenders all in the top of the 18 yard box. Pulls away, creates a shot for himself. Decent save. Goalkeeper's got to do a lot better. Now defensively, where's the breakdowns for DC United? Well, they're all over the place, especially in the first five minutes against the Philadelphia Union. One simple ball, a dummy run at the top of the six-yard box. Remember, no Bill Hamid. This is going to be a very interesting matchup because DC right now, DJ, isn't necessarily playing well defensively. Offensively, they're creating a lot of challenges. Hamid out four to six weeks. He's had surgery, so Arsenal will not be seeing him. Now, with five games in 15 days, the question is, will Jeff Kassar build two separate lineups so guys are fresh? Will he mix and match players? What's the plan? I mean, we've mapped out the next four games. Uh, now things can change. Obviously, we have some players that are coming back from injury. Uh, Schuler, Olave. Um, uh, obviously, Nicky's coming back from, that, from, from national team stay. But we, we have a map. Uh, it doesn't always stay the same, um, but we definitely have a plan. Uh, again, everybody's going to be involved. There's a ton of travel. There's games on turf. Uh, so there's, they're all very important, and they're all kind of different in their own right. So this brings up the question, playing all five in 15 days, that'd be crazy. How many, can a player play four in 15 days? If so, how many should most of these guys, given what comes up after this, be limited to three? Because you can get through this, but what will you have left in the tank after that, especially with so much uh, travel on the road involving yeah. these four games? Um, the good news uh -huh. is that you have, There's oh, good news? You have a week to prepare for the flight to DC. Yeah. From DC, first class trip with a connector down to go to play at Municipal. On the way back, you have first class flight, you're heading to Vancouver, you're on the west coast. As you come back to Salt Lake City, then you transition to going to Sporting Kansas City, which is just about a two hour flight. So could it be a lot worse? Absolutely. 
uh, in terms of trying to balance this type of schedule with the type of players available and coming back from injury, that's the big question mark. I think ultimately you've got to break this up, this schedule, into two different scenarios. You have to look at DC United and then at, uh, on the road in Guatemala. And then you transition to maybe a potential couple of changes that goes to Vancouver and then to Sporting Kansas City. The big news, five games, 15 days, 11,000 air miles that this team's going to have to deal with. Who comes through healthy? What do the results look like? And do things get a little bit tight depending on what those results look like? I think there's a lot of question marks. So you think that map could change? Obviously, red cards, injuries Absolutely. will change it. Obviously. Don't forget but, referees. And then results. Yeah. Results will change maybe what decisions well, Jeff Kassar makes. And we always talk about you can't, I think in my opinion, compartmentalize any tournament right now. You've got Major League Soccer, CONCACAF Champions League, back to Major League Soccer, then to the U.S. Open Cup semifinal on the road at one of our biggest enemies, Sporting <laughs> Kansas City. So I guess the question becomes then, what's the starting 11 look like now for head coach Jeff Kassar? I'm going to say this is the strongest potential starting 11. And I think the question is, do you try to go with that strongest 11 in the first game and see what that game looks like? Abdullah Mansali over on one side. Tony Beltran, who was fantastic in the MLS All-Star game in Denver the other night. Kyle Beckerman comes in, so I would say his partner is going to be Luke Mohan. Javier Morales is going to pull the strings. Uh, the question, though, becomes, do you want to do what you did last week? Big Devin Sandoval at the point of the attack. Have Sebastian Jaime over on the right. Bring a guy like Olmes Garcia off the bench. And also, potentially, where's Jordan Allen fit into this whole equation? Now, for DC United, the big question for me is Andrew Dykstra, the goalkeeper, gave up two horrific goals first five minutes. He's the backup keeper. Bill Hamid is not available. I don't expect him to play as of right now, but... I'm hearing there could be potential. Steve Birnbaum, young center back. Bobby Boswell, an experienced center back. Davey Arnault came over two seasons ago from the Montreal Impact. Perry Kitchen, a young player who had a contract very, very soon. It'll be very fascinating to see where he ends up at the end of the year. And then the big two up front. Fabiana Spindola, Alvaro Sabrio know each other very, very well from their time together at Real Salt Lake. Both players playing at an incredibly high level. Strength, size, athleticism for Sabo. Fabiano Spindola, very deft with his movements, his creativity, and that left foot is one of the best in Major League Soccer. All right, it is time now for the master electrical keys to the game. What are you looking for? Well, it's got to be a Sabo siesta, doesn't it? You want to keep him quiet. You want to make sure you can limit his touches. You want to keep him out of the match as much as possible. For me, it's a big battle of RFK. You want to figure out Riggins and RFK. How can you go on the road in a tough environment? It's going to be hot. It's going to be humid. It's the best team in the Eastern Conference. Can you get maximum points? And if you can't get maximum points, can you at least get a point? And then, dude, where's my car? It's a huge trip that RSL is about to embark on. 11,000 miles, five games in 15 days, three countries. You've got three tournaments with Major League Soccer, CONCACAF Champions League, and U.S. Open Cup. That's definitely not going to be easy. And now we're going to get to figure out what this team is truly made of under horrific circumstances. Four time zones. Remember, it's an early game Saturday because of those time zones. Our coverage starts at 4.30 Saturday afternoon on KMYU as DC United hosts RSL. Now, after DC United Saturday, RSL flies to Guatemala to play Municipal Tuesday in the Champions League opener. You broadcast those games yep. on another network. How good a shot does RSL have at getting a result? It's a good shot. It's going to be a tough field, tough environment. New head coach, new players uh, just announced Carlos Ruiz is going to be back with Municipal. So it's going to make them even more dangerous with his movement. <clears throat> but you take a look, five games, five cities, 15 days, 11,000 miles. That is an incredible challenge right there for Real Salt Lake over the next couple of weeks. One more story we need to discuss. Mexico, the 2015 Gold Cup winner, plays the 2013 Gold Cup winner, the U.S., in the Rose Bowl on Friday, October 9th. The winner goes to the 2017 Confederations Cup in Russia, a great tune-up for the World Cup, but Miguel Herrera out as manager of the Mexican national team. He punched a media member. Allegedly. Allegedly punched Allegedly. a media member in the neck in the Philadelphia airport. The fact is he is out. He is. So regardless of why. What does this do to Mexico? How does the U.S. now, how big of an advantage is this for the U.S.? I, I'm devastated because uh, Piojo de Laos, Miguel Herrera, was my favorite head coach in the world of soccer. His personality, look at those shoulders, look at that neck. Just kind of waddles around. He's so, he was so honest, open. 
He would tweet out his starting 11 the day before the game, the complete opposite of every other coach that we know in the game. Who becomes the next head coach? What about um, a Bob Bradley? Can you imagine oh, if no. Mexico no. went and hired Bob? I mean, listen, if it's a one-game playoff. Who knows the U.S. better than Bob Bradley, right? Can you imagine? No, I can't. I'm going to miss Piojo. Hey, here's another thing. What if the Chicago Fire hired Piojo to be their head coach? They Lightning need, in a bottle. Yeah, they need a spark, And then right? immediately they become relevant again. All right, follow Dunny on Twitter and Instagram at Brian Dunseth. And on Facebook at Brian Dunseth1. I'm on Twitter and Facebook at David DJ James. We will see you Saturday from RFK Stadium. Dave Fox has Utah Championship highlights next. Stay with us on Talking Sports.